Hello and welcome to my fourth devlog video. After the events of the last video, I decided to work on a way to implement things like vines and ropes into the game that naturally moved around in the wind and stuff like that. I started messing around with various ideas, all of which were based on what I believe to be uh, Euler methods. I got some stuff to work that looked pretty decent, but I wasn't quite satisfied, so I went and researched cloth physics actually, because I figured that would work fine. So. Cloth physics in the 2D sense, where it's just something visual and you don't really have to interact with much, it's actually pretty easy to implement. It all comes off of the idea of Verlet integration, which is just the idea that instead of having things like uh, position and velocity, you just have two positions and your velocity is calculated as the difference between the positions. The two positions are the current position and the last position. So if you modify the current position, the velocity changes because the difference between the two points change. The implication is, is that you can move that point around to add limits to motion and it'll kind of bounce back, which is perfect for cloth physics or ragdolls and stuff like that. Anyways, I learned about this and just the basic idea of holding points together with restrictions called sticks and I went to work writing my own system for cloth physics, I guess, using Verlet integration. It was surprisingly easy and had some pretty cool results. I'd really suggest that when you learn things like this, you try at every point you can to do things yourself. In this case, I tried making the vine system myself, but I was using Euler methods, which were causing some problems. But then I learned about relay integration, and then I just went off of some concepts and figured out the rest. When you do things like this, it helps you figure out more things on your own in the future, and it'll help you figure out some things that there may not even be resources for. Next up, I I made a system for generating the ragdoll structures, basically the points and the connections, along with finishing up that system for rendering and handling it so that it works better with my game, although it hadn't been fully implemented at this point. The generation system is just starting with an image where I can draw points onto it that make up the points of the ragdoll, then I can import that into my cloth thing as a set of points, but for that I also need these sticks. So I've have got another tool that loads up the points and I can draw connections between the points to create the full ragdoll objects and their structures. Then I can save those points into what I call a .rag file and I've written a script in my cloth system to import those. And whenever I create a new cloth object I can just specify one of my rag objects to base the object off of, then I can use it as normal. So I made some quick changes to the, the tile set and stuff so I could add some vines into the game through my level editor, and I also added the basic vine setup in my game's code so that it could process it and render it. It's not too much since I already written, wrote all of the stuff for processing and rendering in my main cloth script. I just had to call the functions. Anyways, all of these restrictions that I had to calculate for each one of the vines ended up being a decent burden on my processing, which Verlay integration is actually very efficient. It's much more efficient than some of the alternatives, but I just had too many points. So I'm planning on in the future offloading the Verlay stuff onto a different sub-process or thread or something so that I'm not taking up some of the processing power from the main core the game's using. Because if you don't know, my library, Pygame, runs on the CPU without hardly using the GPU at all, and it can only use one core at a time since games are generally a single-threaded process, but I could just multi-thread that so that I've got two processes and the physics processing doesn't have an effect on the overall performance of the game. Anyways, with the vines implemented, I decided to go in and draw a building, just a brick one, and surprisingly, this was my first time drawing the externals of a building. You can look through all of my games on my website and you probably 
probably won't see any buildings in there. I don't recall, recall ever making any. There's some things that are clearly on the interior of buildings, but never an external view. So that was a new experience, surprisingly. Later on, this building will be enterable, but for the time being, I just wanted to put it in the game's world so it could sit there and look nice. That was pretty simple. I just added a building tile set and plopped it down into the level and then just loaded the game and it was there. I might add a clothesline for the buildings just to show off some more cloth physics, but that's something for later. I'm also thinking of using modular building parts so I could put together different looking buildings without having to draw too much. But that's also something for another date. Anyways, with this one building drawn, I decided to move on to some optimization, although not the vine optimization. I wanted to take a look at the grass again. If you saw some of my earlier devlogs, I've mentioned that the grass was not very well optimized. I was rendering massive images for each blade of grass. Before, I mentioned that I would probably just do math, so I didn't need the big images so that the center was the base of the blade of grass but I went and looked at the math that I'd need to do to render that and it would probably be slower than just drawing a slightly larger image. So what I ended up doing was just trimming the images down to the bare minimum so that it's only like essentially a few extra pixels to draw that compared to doing the math. So next up I drew some wheat which uses the same system as the grass and some fences and added just kind of a farming looking island to my map. Anyways, next up I'll probably be working on the interior of the buildings and the transitions between areas like a building's level and then the main levels and just the switching between the levels themselves. But that's pretty much it for this devlog. I hope I'll see you guys in the next video.